We continue our minimization problems with this example, and it reads, the slushy fruit stand would like to introduce two new energy drinks. Each drink will be high in vitamin B and vitamin C by blending pineapple juice with beet juice. Each drink is to contain at least 1,800 units of vitamin B and at least 300 units of vitamin C. Every ounce of pineapple juice has 90 units of vitamin B, 24 units of vitamin C, and contains 15 calories. Every ounce of beet juice has 180 units of vitamin B, 18 units of vitamin C, and contains 13 calories. Determine how many ounces of each juice slushy fruit stand should blend to meet its required units of vitamins while keeping the number of calories to a minimum. What is the minimum number of calories? So the first thing we can see right here is we want to keep the number of calories to a minimum. We can see the minimum here. So obviously this is going to be a minimization problem and we're going to use the letter C for uh, that will designate minimization. And we're going to go ahead and determine the objective function. So I'm just going to put in C right here. And this is going to be our objective function. And our minimization is going to be dependent upon the number of calories. And of course we have calories here. We have 13 calories here. And we have 15 calories here. Now the 15 calories here, they're generated from the pineapple juice. So if we go ahead and we think of the pineapple juice as X, then we could say 15x calories. So for every pineapple juice that is sold, it's going to make 15 calories. And then of course, we can see right here for the 13 calories, those are generated from the beet juice. So if we think of the beet juice as Y, then we could write this as 13Y. So we have our objective function for the minimization. We have C is equal to 15x plus 13y, x being the pineapple juice and y being the uh, beet juice. So now without the aid of a table, but you can use a table if you want to, but hopefully at this point we can, we can afford a few shortcuts. Without the aid of a table, we're going to go ahead and we're going to generate the constraints for here. So we can see right here there are 90 units of vitamin B from the pineapple juice. So then one of the constraints will start with 90x. And then we could see right here, there are 180 units of vitamin B generated from the beet juice. So then we could say 180y, remembering that x is the pineapple juice and y is the, is the beet juice. Then of course we could see right here, 24 units of vitamin C is generated from the pineapple juice. So we'll go ahead and we'll put in 24x. And as we go along, we see 18 units of vitamin C that's generated from the beet juice. So we'll put in 18y. And of course, there are those overriding totals. And we can see right here, each drink is to contain at least 1,800 units of vitamin B, so at least would be greater than or equal to 1,800. And we see, and at least right here, 300 units of vitamin C, so we'll go ahead and we'll put in greater than or equal to 300 units. So here's our objective function. Here are the constraints. And I'm just gonna rewrite this like this. equal to C. So written like this, I can now make a simple matrix and we'll build that here. We'll put in 90, 180, and 1800. Now this is not a, an augmented matrix and it certainly is not a, a tableau. It's just a simple matrix that we're gonna make so that we can transpose it. And the reason we transpose is we're going to turn this minimization problem into its dual, which would be a maximization problem. So we'll continue with the matrix here. We have 24, 18, and then 300. And of course we use the maximization problem to help solve the minimization problem. Put in 15, 13, 
and one. So now we'll transpose it, we'll create another matrix here, a simple matrix. And every row or each row becomes a column. So the first row here of the minimization matrix here, the first row here becomes the first column. So we'll put in 90, 180, and 1800. Our second row here becomes our second column, 24, 18, and 300. And then our last row becomes our last column, 15, 13, and 1. And we'll close it off. So then from this matrix, we could go ahead and put in our constraints and our objective function for the maximization problem. So we'll write this as 90x plus 24y. That's less than or equal to 15. This is a maximization problem. It's going to be the dual of the minimization problem from over here. Then we have 180x plus 18y. That's less than or equal to 13. And then we have 1800x plus 300y, that's going to be equal to p. The p is our maximization, also known as our profit. But now here is the dual problem of the uh, minimization problem, and this is a maximized problem. Now from here with this maximization problem, we can now write each one of these constraints as an equation with a slack variable. So we'll do that. So we'll put in 90x plus 24y, and we'll introduce a slack variable. We'll use u, and then that's equal to 15. Then 180x plus 18y, and we'll put in another slack variable, but it's got to be different than this equation up here, so we'll use v. And then recall that when we introduce the objective function, all the variables have to be on one side of the equal sign, so we'll write this as negative 1800x minus 300y plus p, and that's going to be equal to 0. So now that we have it written in this fashion, we can now create the simplex tableau. So we'll put in x, y, u, v, p. We'll put in a bracket. 90, 24, 1 for our slack variable, no u slack variable. Put in our vertical bar, 15. Then we'll put in 180, 18, no u slack variable, but we do have a v, 13, and then negative 1800 negative 300, 0, 0, 1, 0, and we'll close off the matrix and put in our horizontal line. So of course this is the simplex tableau that we'll use to solve for the maximization problem. The solution that we come up with will be the same solution for the minimization problem, which is what we're trying to solve for. And of course, now what we need to do is determine our, our pivot element. We look for the most negative value in the last row, and obviously this is the negative 1800, so this will be our pivot column. Then we take each value within that pivot column and divide it into the constants here, the one with the lowest ratio or the smallest ratio, the smallest non-negative ratio, will be our pivot element. So 15 divided by 90 is around 0.17, and 13 divided by 180 is around 0 0.07. So 180 is going to be our pivot element. So what we can do is we could take 1 180th of row 2. Put it in our bracket. So 180 times 1 over 180, that's 1. 18 
times 1 over 180. That's 1 tenth. 0. 1 times 1 over 180. That's 1 over 180. 0. Put it in our vertical bar. 13 times uh, 1 over 180. That's 13 over 180. Close off our matrix, and we fill in the rest. Put in our horizontal line. So now we can target this value here. So we'll take row 1 minus 90 of row 2. We'll continue over here. 1 times 90 is 90. 90 minus 90 is 0. 1 tenth times 90 is 9. And 24 minus 9, that's 15. 0, 0, we bring over the 1. 1 over 180 times 90 is 1 half. And 0 minus 1 half, that's negative 1 half. 0, 0, and 0. Bring down our vertical bar. 13 one times 90 is 13 halves. And 15 minus 13 halves is 17 halves. Close off our bracket. And we carry over the rest. Put in our horizontal bar. So now we target this value here. So we'll do row 3 plus 1,800 of row 2. Put in our bracket. 1 times 1,800 is 1,800. Negative 1,800 plus 1,800, of course, is 0. 1 tenth times 1,800 is 180, and negative 300 plus 180 is negative 120, 0, 0, and 0. 1 over 180 times 1,800 is 10, and 0 plus 10 is 10. 0, 0 will bring over our 1, bring down the vertical line. 13 over 180 times 1,800 is 130, and 0 plus 130 is 130. Close off our matrix and carry over the rest. Finally put in our horizontal bar. So we've now turned this column into our unit column. So then of course we look for negative values in the last row, we still have one here. So we've completed our first iteration. But then we'll begin again. So with this being our pivot column, we have 7 halves divided by 15. And that's about 0.57. And then we take 13 one eightieths and we divide that by one tenth, and that's 0 0.72. So then our pivot value is going to be the 15 here. So then we'll take 1 15th of row 1. Zero, 0, and 0. 15 times 1 15th, 1. 1 times 1 15th, 1 15th. Negative 1 half times 1 15th, that's negative 1 30th. 0 times 1 15th, that's 0. Bring down the vertical bar. 7 halves times 1 15th, that's 17 30ths. Close off our matrix, and we carry over the rest.
put in our horizontal line. And now we can target this value here. So we'll take row two minus one tenth of row one. We'll continue down here. Zero, zero, bring over the one. One times one tenth is one tenth. One tenth minus one tenth is zero. That's the whole idea. One fifteenth times one tenth, that's one one hundred and fiftieth. Zero minus one over one hundred and fifty, that's negative one over one fifty. Negative one over thirty times one tenth, that's negative one over three hundred. One over one eighty minus negative 1 over 300, or in other words, 1 over 180 plus 1 over 300. That's 2 over 225. Then 0, 0, bring over the 0. Bring down our vertical line. 17 thirtieths, 17 over 30, times 1 over 10, times 1 tenth. That's 17 three hundredths. 13 over 180 minus 17 over 300 is 7 over 450. Close off our bracket and bring over the rest. Put in our horizontal bar. And now we can target the last value here. So that'll be row 3 plus 120 of row 1. Put in the bracket. 0, 0, and 0. 1 times 120 is 120. Negative 120 plus 120, 0. Again, that's the whole idea. 1 15th times 120 is 8, and 0 plus 8 is 8. Negative 130 times 120, that's negative 4, and 10 minus 4 is 6. 0, 0, and we'll bring down our 1. Put it in our vertical line. 17 thirtieths times 120 is 68. And 130 plus 68, that's 198. Close off the bracket and bring over the rest. Finally put in our horizontal line. So we've turned this into a unit column. We now check to see if there are any negative values here. And there aren't any, so we're done. We're complete. So that was our second iteration. So we could see right here that the solution would be P is equal to 198. And of course, the fundamental principle of duality says that the solution for the dual problem is gonna be the same solution for the uh, primal problem, which is our minimization problem here. So that means C is also gonna be equal to 198. And if you recall, we said that C is equal to 15X, X being the pineapple juice, plus 13Y, and Y being the beet juice. So we can see that C is going to be equal to 15 times, and we could see right here, going from left to right, we could see right here in the last row, the fundamental principle duality says that the solutions will be in the columns of the slack variables, so if we let this be x, and let this be y, then x, which is our pineapple juice, that'll be 8, plus 13y, and here is our y right here, that'll be 6. 15 times 8, that's 120, and 13 times 6, well that's 78, and 120 and 78, is 198. So determine how many ounces of each juice slushy fruit stand should blend to meet its required units of vitamins while keeping the number of calories to a minimum. Well, there should be X, 
which is the pineapple juice. There should be X is equal to eight units of pineapple juice. And Y, which is our beet juice, Y is equal to six. So Y is equal to six units of beet juice. And that'll all come out to be C, which is 198 calories. And there we go. So here we've used a maximization problem to help solve a minimization problem. Now, there's a lot of rewriting that goes on, but it's pretty straightforward, a little tedious, but very straightforward, but an ingenious way of being able to solve for minimization problems. And there you go.